Welcome to News Beast. We have sold out O'Brien in the house today. Hi. It's wonderful to see you Thank here you so much. on News Beast turf. As yes, opposed I to like it. I like it. News Beast uh, turf. Yeah, it's good turf. Um, you have a great new documentary out. It's part of the series Black in America, and, and this really focuses on 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 questions of, of racial identity and what's called colorism, or in the in the documentary is what's colorism. Yeah, you know, colorism is discrimination based on the color of your skin. That people who are, tend to be lighter skinned uh, have more privileges, and people who are darker skinned have more penalties. And there, are, I'd say, we looked at more than 40 studies that showed correlations between, you know, shades of darker skin and ways in which people were penalized. For example, uh, when it came to job opportunities, mm. men darker skin had a tougher time getting a job. Uh, women who, uh, in terms of getting married harder time getting married if they were darker skin. And, and what's fascinating about this isn't just the history of these debates, particularly, you know, the, the, the tortured history post-reconstruction in the African-American community in, in cities like New Orleans, but the fact that we're talking about a rising demographic here in America, that the old racial divisions, that incredibly simplistic, brutal, racist, white-black division, which was always a lie, is, is, is becoming demographically relevant because of a rising you know, generation of I don't of know if it's irrelevant. I mean, I think a lot of this documentary takes a look at a younger generation who now have this opportunity to try to figure out how they want to identify and it's very painful. Yes. I mean, we look at a girl named Nio Jones, 17, mom is black, dad is white, and she is really struggling with how she should identify. She looks to me like a light-skinned black girl. She has a little afro, uh, brown-skinned girl, and she just says, you know, I don't feel black. I haven't had a black experience. And, you know, she and I actually have the same basic racial makeup. My mom's black, my dad's white. I was never tortured in that way. In the generation before, which I'm in, yeah. it was very clear. You're black or you're white. And, and that, that strange, surreal question that, that the, some of the girls in your documentary deal with, what are you? Yeah. Which is so absurd and, 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 yet, it, and, and yet sort of omnipresent. But it's not absurd. I mean, have, I would say three times a day, someone says, so what are you? Believe it or not, I even get do that. Do you get that? I do. It's interesting. Yeah. And, and I, I have even asked people that, right? Yeah. Because in some ways, it's a very, you know, it's a, hey, I'm interested in your ethnic and racial mm -hmm. makeup because mm -hmm. we're going to have a conversation and this might relate. But often it's um, it's just really, I can't, I'm trying to figure out what box to put you in right. before I start making judgments about who you are right. and what you believe and politically where you stand. Right. So for my comfort, I need to know what you are. And then that annoys me. And it used to annoy me a lot before I started reporting um, you know, when I was younger, it used to, I just, it, I used to say things like, well, I'm an American. I know right. people work hard for it. And human, I make yeah. Them, yeah. Human, <laughs> American. Uh, and, and now I find the question interesting, and I usually tend to come back with another question, and, and we have a, a conversation sure. about it. But yeah, I, I understand why that's a, a frustrating and annoying thing, because it's never really about me. It's more about making someone else comfortable. Right. And, and how, how, how do you self-identify, or more importantly, how did you self-identify when you were growing up? Well, different than Nayo, my mom and dad, uh, who were getting married in the late 1950s, and, and marriage was illegal in, in their in state that they lived in. Really? What state yeah, was They that? lived in Maryland. And it so was illegal So they in left Maryland. Maryland, got hitched in D.C., drove back to Maryland, and the ACLU actually asked them to be the couple that would taste, test the ban on interracial marriage before the Supreme Court. My dad was working uh, on his Ph.D., and he was too busy, so he said no. And, and then the, the, loving, the loving family. The loving family. So we missed history. Um, <laughs> I think so, you're compensating but, but when I was it, When I was right? growing up, my parents used to say, you're black. Don't let anybody tell you you're not black. Don't let anybody tell you you're not Latino. And I used to think, like, who's the they? We right. live in an all-white neighborhood. Like, There's no they that's going to come and tell me this. Um, but I realized two things. One, it was very helpful to have your identity shaped and formed so before you were even having conversations about it, you had a really, I had a very strong sort of sense of self mm -hmm. and identity. And, and then I also realized that they knew that there would come a time when people would try to chip away at your identity. And I see that happening to Nayo. So I, I feel like I missed what she's going through now. Struggling because we, my parents, both of them, my dad who's white was like, you're black, you're not white. Um, I identify as black and my mother's Cuban, so I'm black and Latina. Final question, what is white? That's a really good question. I've gotten a lot of um, uh, suggestions to do a documentary white in America, which I think would be fascinating. I mean, if I didn't have another full-time gig. <laughs> yeah, like, for, like, <laughs> uh, every morning. I think that'd be really interesting because I think tracing the roots of why we have white, right? White is supposed to symbolize what does that purity. Mean? But as you remember from the story, when they traced, um, I think, was it Michelle Obama's roots? To yeah, South, right? South Carolina, so, I believe South Carolina. I mean, it, no, no, what? it was the president's roots. It was through the president's mother. Oh, well, she, right? yeah. But his roots, it's his white mother who actually was tied to slavery. 
Yep. She was the one who had roots to slavery. Uh, you know, and, and so it's, it's white in America would be fascinating because what is white? Why, no one is really, I don't think, uh, completely, there's you no know, racial well, there, there, there's Yeah, there's, there's this myth of a white monolith and purity, and that's never been the American story, and even yet, though we pretended it is. Right, and yet it's and a great part privilege of the, based on it. Right, yeah. and it's a great part of the American story. So I think that would be a fascinating documentary. Uh, and, and I don't know why I have to really dig into that to see, you know, who is white in America. And how that definition has changed. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Soldier O'Brien, thanks so much for coming to Newsbeast. It's my pleasure. Thank it's you great for to see me. you. Black in America airs this weekend. Sunday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Beautiful. Great. We will see you all. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday at Newsbeast.